Welcome back to Steins Gate. Last time, all of Akiba had changed after uh, Faris sent her message to the past. And then we got into a really awkward conversation with Lukako, Mayuri, Kurisu, and Okorin. But Okorin called Lukako a girl. Well, no, he didn't. He called Lukako a boy. And it seems as though Lukako is identifying as a girl in this timeline. But Okura doesn't know that and it's now gotten very awkward. And that's where we left things, literally in the middle of that awkward discussion. So hopefully things will get sorted out pretty pretty quickly. What did I do to deserve this tongue lashing? Apologize. Apologize to Urushibara-san right now. <laughs> Wait a second, I don't have to apologize for anything. I just said the truth. Okay. Lukaku gets up from the sofa. His head is still hanging and his voice is barely audible. So, so that's how Okabe san sees me. <laughs> no, 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 that's not how I see you, Lukako. You're a guy, remember? Or are you denying reality too? Okay, that was like the worst thing to say, oh my god. You're the one denying reality? That's right, Luka-chan's a girl, Okarin. You're terrible. Mayuri, when did you start calling Luka-ko Luka-chan instead of Luka-kun? Cut it out already, Okabe. She's a girl. Mayuri nods in agreement. Uh huh. What's going on here? Is this some kind of prank? I'm going home. Lukaku tries to slip by me out of the lab. I grab his hand to stop him from leaving. Hold it, Lukaku. You can't fool me. You're as much a man as I am, and I know how to prove it. Oh god, no. What's he gonna do? Oh my god. I pin the clock with arms and reach for his packet. Oh my god. Let's see what you're hiding. Um, really? Nothing. Huh? Oh? Oh. No. <laughs> god. Oh, 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 oh. This. Eh? Done. Eh? I feel- oh my god, I feel around some more. Uncomfortable. <laughs> Nothing. Nada. It should be there. I mean, he's a guy. Isn't he? An electric current runs through my brain. No way. Yes, no, that can't have changed. So that's what happened. Lukako, Lukako you, have you let her go? The d that I thought had failed was actually a success. Okay, that's not how science works. That can't be what happened. <gasps> You're a girl? <laughs> That's what we've been saying. Oh, and he fainted. A half sec. Oh, no. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> I mean, he deserves worse than that, let's be honest. A half second later, Karisu cracks me over the head with her heavy textbook. <laughs> yeah, I think an apology is warranted now, Okorin. When my vision clears, Lukako is crying. Mayuri is rubbing her back, comforting me. Risu, meanwhile, is glaring down at me like I'm something she scraped off the bottom of her shoe. Daru, who arrived a moment ago, is in the corner, trying not to laugh. 
Honestly, I can't blame him. Righteous high school girl makes perverted college guy beg for forgiveness. If I had to put a title to this scene, that's what it would be. Top of my head is throbbing. Most likely because Kurisu wiped out a hundred million of my precious neurons, envied by scientists the world over. I put a moist towel to my head. I want to vivisect your skull and remove your brain for a good washing. Then I'll submerge it in culture fluid so you can never do anything like that again. Anyway, just be thankful I haven't reported you to the police. Hi. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Man, that was dumb. I didn't think it would be gone. Lukaku has become a girl. Her face hasn't changed and she's flat as a board, but she's definitely a girl. There's no denying what my hand didn't feel. I guess that ridiculous superstition was true. If you eat vegetables, you have a girl. Does this count as a scientific breakthrough? Like, okay, this cannot be what has happened. Anyway, I'd better apologise, Lukaku. Yeah, you think? I hope she doesn't get PTSD because some pervert, me, groped her. I mean, she's a 17-year-old girl now and she was shy to begin with. I'll need to be as gentle as humanly possible from now on. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she never spoke to me again. I have no one but myself to blame. I'll just have to accept the consequences. <laughs> Anyway, what in the hell made you think that Urushibara-san was a boy? <laughs>それについては前にも言ったはずだ。D-メールによる過去改変だよ。ルカコは男だったが、女の子になりたいという願いを元にD-メールを送り、それは成功した。as I already explained, we changed the past. Lukaku was a guy, but he wanted to be a girl, so we sent a D-mail to make his wish come true. And it worked. I knew the world line had changed. My magic eye, reading Steiner, saw the shift in time. But I chose to believe my mundane senses instead. I should have had more faith in my powers. I won't make that mistake again. Karisu calmly readies her book above her head. Want some more? I'm telling the truth, you have to believe me. I can explain this phenomenon logically. When we sent the D-mail, we changed the past and all of history changed as a result. My brain perceived that change. I leaped to my feet, overcome with excitement. Out of all of mankind, I alone can perceive changes in causality. I am this world's observer, okay? You don't know that, Okarin. There may be someone else who's really confused. <laughs> I look around, expecting to see awe on their faces. Sit down before I hit you again. I do as I'm told. Don't you understand? I'm the observer, the one who opens the box holding Schrodinger's cat. Yeah, Mayuri's not gonna know what Schrodinger's cat is about. Schrodinger? Yeah. 
Schrödinger's cat again. The Japanese can't get enough of that cat. You're Japanese too. I've had enough Schrödinger, thanks. I do admit that Kit is a cute though. Daru is absolutely right. Whenever an anime wants to use quantum mechanics, the characters always talk about Schrodinger's cat. Anyway, my magic eye has the power to perceive changes in the world line. This power is called reading Steiner, as I've explained. And I told you that that name was stupid, remember? It's English, like something from a kid's manga. Not to mention it's a grammatical mess, and there's also the fact that it's half German, so no consistency there either. It's stupid. The same goes for that Stein's Gate thing you're always talking about. <laughs> Looks like you've still got that Mongolian spot on your butt, eh, Christina? Names are all about feeling. My creativity, comparable to the great Da Vinci himself, cannot be held by the shackles of grammar. I'm hoping his laugh is interrupted because Creases hit him over the head again. Thank you. She hits me again. I'm seeing stars. So a little remorse, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. Lukaku is still crying. Well, yeah, don't blame her. As punishment, I spend the next 30 minutes on my knees under Carisu's watchful eye. If I slouch for a second, I get the corner of her book. I'd accept being told die, pervert, if it were coming from Lukaku, but why the hell is Carisu butting in? I didn't do anything to her. I know, but Lukaku's probably too shy to actually do that, so... You know, girls can stick up for one another. Does she think she's one of those class president characters? Anyway, I flee the lab as soon as my punishment is over. The silent pressure from the girls is just too much to bear. I step into the sun and stretch. My legs are numb from the kneeling, so I can barely stand straight. At that time, the Braun Tube workshop door opens and out comes part-time warrior. Our eyes meet. Awesome. Up. She's less energetic than usual. Why are you so wobbly? It's a new exercise. Huh. Never heard of it. The Zuha answers listlessly as she sits down on the bench. When she aimlessly gazes skyward, I follow suit. Huge clouds are slowly swallowing the blue. A helicopter flies overhead. I can hear its propellers slicing the air. Perfect weather for cycling. Huh? Really? Soka. But it's so damn hot. How can you exercise on a day like this? I'd rather drink hot coffee in a well air conditioned room while browsing the net. Now that's a luxurious way to spend summer break. If only the lab had air conditioning. Hey, up for a little cycling? Seriously? She has to be joking. Your bike only has one seat. One of us can sit on the back. 
Don't you have work to do? Zuha pops into the store. She's back in less than a minute. I got permission. It's not like we'll have customers anyway. I try to think of an excuse to refuse, but nothing comes. I am a mad scientist. Not a mad cyclist. So why am I doing the pedaling? Yeah, doesn't Suzuha have like magic thighs? That's all I remember from when she arrived. Long ago, Aristotle said time is just the measure of motion. So put those pedals in motion. That doesn't make sense. I'm exhausted. We barely made it to the station. I'd die if I went another block. This was a terrible idea. I should have known better. I get off the bicycle and sit against the station wall. Suzuha sets the bike against the wall and crouches next to me. Sitting on the ground is undignified for a man of my stature, but no matter. I just need a few moments to catch my breath. I watch the crowds of people move past. Nearly all of them are men. Here and there I see people carrying large boxes, most likely PC parts or appliances. There isn't an anime poster in sight. When Akiba changed, so did the people who visited it. This atmosphere, it's kind of retro. It's the Akiba I've only seen in pictures, Akiba at the end of the 20th century. The electric tower in its purest form, let me just check my phone, my, oh my Yuri. How about Luka-chan? Um, Luka-chan said she'll forgive you if you cosplay Kakarukan from Raynet. Or maybe an Upa cosplay would be better, lol. Just kidding. Leave Luka-chan to Mayushi. Kakarukan. I haven't seen Raynet. I'm gonna reply because, you know, he should, if that's what'll make Luka-kun feel better. I mean, I don't think that's Luka-kun's idea. Luka-chan. Sorry, I'm used to you. Luka-kun. Luka-chan, I need to remember. Um, if that's what makes Luka-chan feel better, then great, except I kind of think that's just Mayuri's idea. Anyway. It has risen from the ashes of the past, and the only one who knows it is me. You know... Zuha murmurs. It's only been 10 days since I arrived in Tokyo. Huh. I didn't know that. Vacation? No, that can't be right. I'm hunting for my father. That's a strange way to put it. Did he run away? I meant it as a joke, but Suzuha looks so serious. I hope I didn't screw up again. I haven't seen him in years, but I know he's in this town. Oh, but then why are you working downstairs? Suzuha works at the Braun Tube Workshop from 11am to 7pm every day. I doubt that leaves much time to search. Honestly, I don't have a clue where to begin. Have you talked to the police? No. Oh, 
Well, then shouldn't you? Or you could hire a private investigator or something, if you have money. I don't have the resources. And besides, there are... issues. Issues? I only have one chance. And that chance is tomorrow. I know that tomorrow he might appear in a certain place. A certain place? That has a rather ominous ring to it. Could her father be some kind of fugitive? I stay silent, unable to think of a response. If I miss that chance, then I'll have to leave. By leave, you mean go back home? Not exactly. I have a parallel priority engagement. What? I've already made up my mind. I don't find him tomorrow, I'll give up. You're worried, aren't you? I understand that feeling. You're alone, searching for your father in an unfamiliar town. It can't be easy. You hoped that talking to someone would help. That's why you sought out the most reliable person around. Me. Alas, part-time warrior, you have made a grave mistake. For I am the insane mad scientist Hoenn Kyoma. <laughs> you shall be my next guinea pig. Guinea pig. You know what I'm talking about. D-mail, the greatest discovery in the history of science. I've already explained D-mail to Suzuha before. <laughs> you shall be the subject of our next experiment. What are you going to do? Zuha takes a step back. She finally realizes the danger she's in. What? It's not simple. Do? Simple. I need more data and I'll do anything to obtain it. You're going to change the past. You can change it however you like, but only I will know the difference. If you think that's cruel... If you think that's cruel, then do as you please. But know that you are already caught in my web. You cannot escape. Fear not! I know exactly what you should write in your D-mail. Good 
こうメールを送るのだ。Listen well. You're going to send this to your father before he disappeared. 娘を置いていくな。とな<笑> Don't abandon your daughter. いいやつだね、You're a nice guy. You know that? No. What? Uh, what? なんかちょっとだけ楽になったかも。I think talking to you really did help. お前、俺を侮辱するつもりか。俺はいいやつなどではない。実験のことしか考えていない。狂気のマッドサイエンティストである。Are you trying to insult me? I am not a nice guy. I am a mad scientist who experiments on women and children. Now tell me your father's email address. If you don't. Then I shall. Then I shall unleash the power of my right arm. Once it's unsealed, not even I can control it. You may not survive. Consider yourself warned. Okay, before we continue, really sort of, I feel like this is kind of out of nowhere as a theory, but what if, like, Suzuha gives Okarin the email address of her dad and it's the same email as John Titor? Like, maybe he, that's. Because she says weird stuff. She could be from the future. She said some weird things. I don't know. Just a random theory. Could be completely wrong. Sorry, I can't. You dared to fight me? I don't know his email address or his phone number. Well, that's a letdown. That's why tomorrow is my only chance. Thanks for caring, though. I don't care. I'm just disappointed I couldn't experiment on you. Anyway, you can send mail to the past. That's amazing. The first time machine ever. <laughs> すごいのは当然だろう。なぜなら俺は。ホーインキョーマだからな。Of course it's amazing. I am ホーインキョーマ。アップグレードの予定は ?Any plans to upgrade it? アップグレード ?Upgrade it? そのタイムマシンのアップグレード。例えば、人そのものを遅れちゃうようになるとか。You know, like sending people to the past or something? 検討中だ。We're working on it. Excuse me, Suzuha, while、well, I check my phone. Mayuri. Kakaru kun, check the interwebs for more details. Attachment. Oh, what? Oh, God, she sent me fanfic? These days, online banking is widespread. Sometimes even billions of currency are transferred wirelessly. The current enemy, Bishop, is a tough opponent, cracking through a mobile connection while driving to mask his location. But Kakaru reads his opponent's moves one by one and gradually corners him. In order to close the distance, Kakaru and friends don rollerblades, moving between hotspots and public phone lines in town. With Kakaru's swift techniques and precise strikes, along with Tamari's group's teamwork, they successfully corner Bishop. Out of options, their target uses his last resort, one of the nine existing phantom monster programs, Terios. Its capacity for wanton destruction instantly turns the tables on Kakaru. Bishop prepares to use Terios to deliver the final blow. The vile virus appears. Checkmate for Kakaru. But then, as if to protect them, something flies out of Kakaru's PC. It's the virtual pet Upa that Kakaru cared for. Upa intercepts the hit meant for Kakaru. Will Upa be okay? Wait, how much of this am I getting? This is a new one.、Um, Upa has taken direct attack from the monster level virus. But he is unscathed, and of all things, he devours the attack itself. Kakaru has successfully countered Bishop with Upa's great efforts. On top of that, he has obtained Bishop's monster program, Terios. But he doesn't understand. Why could Upa devour such a strong monster level virus program? 
Not even Nagaya-san knows, but the mystery site master Cyber Dragon might. Cyber Dragon, who has information about every program in existence, is like a sage with knowledge of the entire net world. Kakaru and friends begin searching for Cyber Dragon's site immediately. In order to obtain the URL for Cyber Dragon's site, it appears they'll need to clear the online game Cyber Dragon Trial. This is a typing battle with increasing viral attacks, wearing Kakaru down. But he keeps going, cheered on by his friends. After a gruelling struggle, Kakaru successfully gets the URL for Cyber Dragon's site. They finally manage to meet Cyber Dragon. As his name suggests, he takes the form of an elder dragon. He inspects Upa's program. What he discovers is that Upa is also a monster program. Kirari worries Upa is in danger. Cyber Dragon, however, explains that based on the user's will, a deadly weapon can also become a tool to protect. Unfortunately, that also means it will be necessary to awaken Upa's inner monster program. And if Kakru fails to fully master it, he may lose control of the awakened form. Without knowing how to awaken Upa, Kakaru and friends leave Cyber Dragon's site. In order to overcome the vile programs, Kakaru pledges to discover Upa's monster program boot process. Before long, rumours spread around the world of Kakaru and friends, the amazing grade schoolers who possess a monster program. Oh my god, number seven? Um, access number seven, okay. Uh, first in aircraft history, ground hijack. Japan prepares to send a team to the Typing Masters World Championships in Los Angeles. Along Japan's representatives is Kakaru, who has become an instant celebrity for solving numerous cyber crimes. Tamaru accompanies a second, and Karari's wealth lets her pay her own way. While they're chatting on the plane, an emergency suddenly occurs. The cabin crew frantically approaches them. It appears that someone has hijacked the jumbo jet. Moreover, the culprit is not on board, Somehow he hacked the comp hijacked the computer systems from the ground. The crew cannot switch to manual control, letting the hacker decrease the plane's altitude along with its 276 passengers. Without needing a single explosive, the culprit instead was bringing down the plane by halting its engines electronically, the century's first ground hijack. The hacker wants the monster program Upa. Kakaru infiltrates the jet with its sub notebook and tries to trace the tracker the tracker, the hacker, but can't. The only line that connects to the jet is the heavily protected control towers. Searching for the core of that line fails. There is no suspicious activity from the tower. Kakaru and friends grow impatient. Only special radio waves should have been able to reach the plane's height from the tower. However, considering other possibilities, Kakaru comes up with another idea via satellite. Bingo! Kakaru is right. The ground base is connected to the satellite through an external line. The culprit broke the, fire, the satellite's firewall to connect to the plane's computer systems. Both a satellite and a plane were hijacked in this major incident. Kakaru figures this out and corners the culprit. The first war fought at the core of an orbiting satellite begins. A quick victory. The opponent is clever, but not enough to match Kakaru's methods. Kakaru and friends watch the first space battle unfold on screen. The jumbo jet is almost beautiful as a shuttle floating in space. Stars are reflected in Kakaru's eyes. Next, the World Typing Masters Championship begins. I like how he was talking with Suzua and then just ended up reading fanfic. I assume it was fanfic. I don't know. Anyway, sorry about that, Suzuha. Back to the conversation. Uh, no good ideas yet, though. <laughs> Then let me give you one word of advice. You should leave Makise Kurisu out of it. What do you have against her anyway? Well, better get back to the workshop. I only got a 30 minute break. I'll get in trouble if I don't get back soon. I stop Suzuha as she gets on the bike. Come to the lab tomorrow, whether you meet your father or not. Why? 
D メールを使わせてやる。So I can use your grief to power my time machine? さすがマッドサイエンティスト。悪逆非道だね。You really are a mad scientist. So evil. もし父さんと会えたなら行くよ。その時はみんなで祝福をあげてよね。If I meet my father, I'll stop by. Then we can do a gun salute. She laughs happily. Then she starts peddling. Leaving me behind. Hey, wait! Let me on! Hey! Suzuha doesn't wait, leaving me no choice but to run back to the lab. I shall now brief you on Operation Eldrumner. Okay, so it's the next day, I think. Part time warrior. Eureka. Going to infiltrate now. What should I do? I'm so nervous. I can't see my own heart, like peeking through frosted glass. Wish me luck. Over and out. Okay. The only lab mems here today are Mayuri, Kurisu, and Lukako. I couldn't get a hold of Faris or Moeka. They must be busy. Daru, meanwhile, gave me some crap about having things to do. I was prepared for Lukako to refuse my invitation, but since she's here, I guess she's forgiven me. For now, at least. I want you guys to get ready for a party. I've already explained to the lab mems what Suzuha told me yesterday. And what are you going to do? Me? I'm going to follow that part time warrior and report back as the situation changes. Don't you dare let her be alone with her father. <laughs> You shouldn't be so quick to reject my plans, Christina. You don't understand the intricacies of the human psyche. Now that you've rejected my plan, there's no way I'm not going through with it. You have underestimated my pride. Get over yourself. そもそもクリスティーナよ。お前とバイト戦士は対立していたはずだ。にもかかわらず、そのような気遣いをするとは、大した偽善ぶりだな。Besides, Christina, you and she are enemies, are you not? You protect her from me while plotting her demise? That makes you a hypocrite. あんたの行動が人としてダメすぎるんだろ。You just don't have standards, that's all. そうだよ。He's right. I don't think you should bother her, Corinne. Even during the strategy meeting, Mayuri keeps working on her costume. Lukako hasn't agreed to wear it yet, but Mayuri's enthusiasm remains strong. No matter what happens, we need to give her a warm welcome. I'll do anything to help make this party super special. Um, actually, I haven't met this Suzuha san. The zoo sounds really nice. I'm sure you'll get along with her too. Nice. Anyway, I'm gonna tail her now. You guys. No, get it through your thick skull. Damn it, assistant. How dare you give me orders? In the end, I can't get permission to tail Suzuha. Don't even think about running off somewhere. 
Harisu is forcing me to help her with the shopping. There's no way out. Damn it. Carissa really is turning into a class president character. At this rate, she might take over the lab. Wait, could this be what Suzuha was warning me about? Nah. Anyway, time to get my head in the game. We must prepare for the Last Supper. Operation Eldrumnir. The Last Supper refers to our party for Suzuha. In the event she reunites with her father, we'll just celebrate normally. In other words, it will be her last supper in Tokyo. However, if she doesn't reunite with her father, we'll kidnap her and force her to participate in our experiments. Sacrifices must be made if we're going to perfect D-mail technology. In that case, it will be the last supper on this world line. The lab's budget? most of which comes out of my pocket is tight, but it's okay to party every once in a while. There's no such thing as low risk, high return. High risk, high return. That is how a mad scientist operates. I can already taste Suzuha's despair. <laughs> Over there, isn't that? I follow Karisu's finger to see Daru emerge from Yodobashi camera. Found you, Daru. Uh, oh. uh. I grab his collar to stop him from escaping. Why didn't you respond to my summons? Like I said, I've got something to do. Which is... An offline meet? Inexcusable. Wait, just listen a sec. You're offline meat or a party with food handmade by our very own lab girls? Choose one. Handmade by girls? Oh, what, one question. Will Faris Tan be there? Before Karisu can answer that, I whisper to Daru. Naturally. <laughs> Faris is a lab mem too. So, how do you think about Damn it, why do they have to be on the same day? Can't it wait until tomorrow? What will it be? The time to choose is now. I want to eat Faris Tan's home cooking. If you give up the offline meat, then that settles it. I give up, I give up the offline meat. Daru surrenders all too quickly. When we return to the lab, Mayuri and Lukaku are already starting preparations. Huh? Darukun's here too? What about Ferris Tan? Where is she? You've been tricked. Ferris Tan said she couldn't come. Wait, seriously? Oh, Corinne, what's going on here? This isn't funny, man. Don't worry, I'll make sure she comes to the next one. You've got to be kidding me. I was looking forward to that time machine meet. Time machine off guy? Nani sore? Time machine meet? What's that? Oh, 
It's an offline meet for this sci-fi BBS I post on. Some famous writers are going to be there. I won't forgive you, Okarin. Ever. What? What? Why didn't you say so? I would have gone too! Suddenly, I smell something strange. Does anyone else smell that? Smell what? Did we blow a fuse somewhere? Sorry. Lukaku's apologizing for something. That's... That's probably the smell of Mayuri's cooking. What? This is the smell of food? I'll help too. Okay, th then warm these eggs, please. Hmm. Should I use the phone wave? No! If you put raw eggs in a microwave, they'll explode. We took the door off. It should be fine, right? <laughs> chop, chop, chop a dee chop. Okay, yeah. Mayuri chan, don't hold your knife like that. What the hell is going on here? Daru and I exchange glances. Maybe we should help too. Or at least kick them out of the kitchen. Won't end up the same either way. I'm getting dizzy. This isn't the future I was hoping for. You're telling me. I'll never forget this, Okarin. Never. I'm sorry. Truly. But please, Daru, stay with me to the end. I'll order pizza as insurance. It only gets worse. The smoke grows thicker by the second, filling my lungs with ash and tar. In less than an hour, the girls have transformed the lab into a class 5 disaster zone. I take out my phone and put it to my ear. It's me. Looks like the evil one is free. If you haven't heard from me in an hour, tell my parents I love them. Okarin, that's a death flag. Is this the choice of Steins Gate? Elpsai Kongru. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. I guess we'll find out next time if um, Suzuha found her dad. Or if she didn't. If they all die from Lukako, Mayuri, and Carissa's cooking, they could all die from the sounds of it. We'll see. Okay, what tips do we have? Death flag. A metafiction term. When a character triggers a death flag, they have said or done something that foreshadows their death. A common way to trigger a death flag is to make a promise on the eve of a climactic battle. For example, when this war's over, I'm gonna get married. Okay, Eldrimnir 
In Norse mythology, it's the cauldron used to cook for the gods. Kitte. The word kitten, uh, neko, corrupted for cuteness. Used by cat lovers all over the internet. Schrodinger's cat. Oh, this is a longer one. A thought experiment proposed by physicist Erwin Schrodinger. Schrodinger intended it as a paradox that would refute quantum theory, but it has since been proven to not be a paradox. It is often referenced in fiction as an example of the complexities of quantum mechanics. A c- no. A cat is placed inside a box. The box also contains a vial of poisonous gas and a sample of some radioactive substance. If the radioactive substance emits an alpha particle, it sets off a sensor, releasing the poisonous gas and killing the cat. Assume the radioactive substance has a 50% chance of emitting one alpha particle per hour. After one hour, you open the box. The cat has a 50-50 chance of being alive or dead. The question is, was the cat alive or dead before you found it? According to Einstein, your observation of the cat's condition is irrelevant. The cat was either alive or dead before you opened the box. Okay, and PTSD, short for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, from DSM 4, the fourth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, published by the American Psychiatric Association in 1994. A mental disorder inducing various stress symptoms caused by the shock of an accident, disaster, or crime. Symptoms include emotional instability, insomnia, confusion, and flashback memories. Diagnose if symptoms continue for over a month. Okay, well, that was a interesting session. Uh, started off a bit badly. It went to places I wasn't expecting it to go, even given where we ended last session. But after that, it kind of got a bit back on track. I mean, I'm still intrigued to know like if Lukaku was born you know a girl or not it doesn't really matter either way just I feel like the science doesn't make sense if she was she's a girl now it doesn't really matter what she was born as just you know it just doesn't make sense that the text actually changed what she was born as I don't that's not how eating vegetables doesn't change the gender of a baby anyway I don't know if we'll find out. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. It's more just me going, that's not how science works. But, you know, we'll see. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time.